It sounds like something right out of some crime drama you see on TV, but unfortunately, this story is all too true. A criminal case went down in May of 2020 that shocked the entire world and showed just how far some people are willing to go to become famous on TikTok. In this video, we present you with the story of 18-year-old Zachary Latham, who terrorized his neighbors for years and published it all on TikTok. In the end, he killed him. This offense is shocking, and it really could have been prevented. So for all this and more, stay tuned right here at Wonderlane. What are your thoughts on social media? Is it harmless fun, or has it psychologically crippled an entire generation? You might have just picked up on the fact that I have a strong opinion on the matter, but we still want to hear yours, so be sure to drop it in the comments. So the tragic 2020 incident was the result of several things that built upon each other. Let's start back in 2018, which is about the time that the then 16-year-old Zachary Latham moved into his grandparents' house in New Jersey. On paper, Latham seemed like a normal teenage kid, having just started his army training and spending a fair amount of time with his girlfriend. Zachary's grandparents' house was in a suburb, so he had lots of neighbors, and right next door lived the Durham family, who were known around the neighborhood as very friendly and peaceful, down-to-earth people. Conflict came to the Durhams via their new neighbor, Zachary, though. Shortly after his arrival, Mr. Durham began to complain. Zachary Latham had received his driver's license shortly before moving in and was now driving every day and every night. The problem, though, was his speed and how loud his car was. William Durham saw fit to complain to Latham's grandparents, who urged their grandson to apologize to the Durham family. However, the grandparents' attempts to restrain Zachary failed, and he decided to cause even more trouble and continued to set the quiet residential streets ablaze. This was a blatant provocation to Mr. Durham, and so some minor altercations between the two occurred repeatedly in the following years. While most of the time it pertained to Latham's reckless driving, Zach would soon up the ante a bit. He began filming and provoking the Durhams on camera. In a video he posted to TikTok, Latham sits in his car and provokes his neighbor, Mrs. Durham, by calling her the wrong name while blocking traffic. Then he uploaded this video to TikTok and it went viral with 3 million clicks in a very short time. Although Latham had done something morally reprehensible, the comment section celebrated him and encouraged him to continue terrorizing his neighbors. Some of his followers demanded that Latham slash her tires or egg her house. For Latham, this was fuel to the fire. He published almost exclusively videos in which he got into arguments with his neighbors and regularly drove them to their wits end. Since his quote-unquote normal TikToks hardly ever received any attention, he seemed to have decided for himself that what the people wanted was for him to torture his neighbors, and as long as he delivered, the views would keep on coming. In one video, he stood in front of the Durham family's house for hours, calling out their names. Eventually, the 21-year-old William Durham Jr. ran out of the house to remove Latham from the property, but Zach kept filming, and thus William Durham Jr. was portrayed to the masses as an angry neighbor who can't take a joke. Zach's antics became more and more extreme, and the Durhams decided to report him to the police. However, local law enforcement seemed disinterested in the case, despite the fact that Latham had also filmed several police officers without consent. Cops did not see it as their duty to put an end to Latham's crimes of speeding and violating the Durham's privacy. Officially, the local police headquarters said that they had no capacity for neighborhood squabbles because of the pandemic. But in retrospect, many suspect that the police officers did not want to be featured in one of Latham's TikToks. In addition to this, there was another incident on May 4th, 2020 that kind of brought the whole situation to its boiling point. Zachary Latham was driving through the residential neighborhood much too fast, as usual, when he saw William Durham's second son riding his bike on the sidewalk. He drove his car onto the sidewalk and knocked the kid off his bike. The Durham boy, thankfully, was okay, but his parents understandably freaked. William Durham and his wife Catherine decided to take matters into their own hands. They sought direct confrontation in order to settle the matter, and they went over to Latham's house. This quickly turned into a shouting match, and after a short while, Latham snapped, elbowing Catherine Durham in the face and threatening to do something awful to the Durhams. Now, the following events are documented only by police report. After making his threats, Latham went back into the house and grabbed two knives and a taser. Then he went back out and pointed the taser at one of Durham's sons. William Durham reportedly fought back, reaching out to control Latham, who then escaped by hitting him in the arm with one of the knives. 
Latham then fled to his garage, and this is where things went from stupid to tragic. Adrenaline was pumping. Mr. Durham chased Latham down to the garage. A physical altercation occurred during which Latham used his taser several times. Latham's 18-year-old wife was also present, and she had filmed the entire situation to this point. She's on record as having asked her husband several times to put the knives away. However, Zachary did not heed her advice, and he stabbed Mr. Durham near his armpit. According to forensic experts, he wounded Mr. Durham's lungs, which ultimately cost him his life. The investigators and lawyers in the case of Zachary Latham did not rule out that the motive for Latham's act was basically his desire for more attention on social media, especially TikTok. Before we conclude by discussing what's going to happen to Zachary Latham, we would like to briefly discuss this darker side of social media. The case of Zachary Latham shows how far people are willing to go when they're being watched and egged on by a large audience. Obviously, this is an extreme case, but it happened. The anonymous nature of the internet allows anyone to express their opinion completely unfiltered, and often this leads to incitement of violence. It's important to stay grounded, and it's important for us to remember that there's no honor or virtue in saying something that you wouldn't say in real life to someone's face while hiding behind a screen. Throwing the word cyber in front of the word bullying doesn't change anything as it pertains to severity. People get hurt either way, and really, an argument can be made that cyberbullying is the more pressing matter due to how commonplace it's become. People that would never become real-life bullies may very well have the capacity to bully someone anonymously online. So to wrap things up, let's cover Latham's sentence. Zachary Latham is facing life in prison. Since the video recorded by his wife clearly depicts the events that took place, the defense was relatively helpless. Although the exact sentence has yet to be decided, it is likely that Latham will be put away for life. So that's going to do it for our video on the tragic case of Zachary Latham and William Durham. Yet another red flag on the part of TikTok. Y'all be good out there. Surf the web with dignity and compassion. Don't forget to leave a nice comment. And if you like this video, you should subscribe to Wonderlane for more videos like this every other day.